Hey gang, what's up? It's Wes. Uh, very exciting times. There is a new tutorial out. And not only is it a new tutorial, but it's one specifically tailored to Krita. Yeah, Krita, that free program that you've probably downloaded and kind of dabbled with, but maybe moved on to something else. But I'm here to tell you that there are a few features of Krita that uh, really are blowing me away. And we're right before the release. I say right before. We don't know the timetable of the release for version 4.5, but we know it's coming pretty soon. It's in beta and alpha and we're getting people getting kind of preview stuff on it so it's an exciting time to be sure and they're going to really blow the roof off with their new brush engine on that which i'm super excited to dig into but in the meantime there is something that you can use right now called the rgba brushes they're completely free they're built into krita and i made a premium tutorial going over how to make a traditional painting in krita and we're going to kind of see the painting side of that sped up a lot. And I'm going to have my normal narration over it. But if you like what you see in this time lapse, just know that the premium tutorial goes step by step. We talk about things as they're happening. Um, just know there's a few things that I didn't do for this one. Number one, I did not use multiple layers. This is all done on one layer. Number two, I did not use the undo feature at all. It was off limits. So everything you see is corrected by painting. And number three, there's no color picking. I don't use a, re I use a reference, but I do not pick colors from it. I try to eyeball it. And uh, so there's a lot of lessons going on here. So if you're fairly advanced or you kind of know the drill and kind of are comfortable in your own skin working with digital painting, you can just feel free, really just go ahead, just watch this time lapse um, with my narration over it. And you'll probably get what you need to out of that tutorial. However, if you're a newer or an intermediate artist or looking to kind of get into more traditional painting, um, what, uh, a person put tradigital on one of my deals. And I was like, that's a perfect so a big shout out to you for saying tradigital. That's kind of the perfect amalgamation. Uh, but if you're interested in using these digital tools in a traditional way, I do recommend you get the full tutorial. It's only $4. It's the, the price of a value meal and it's stuff you get to keep forever. It's over two hours of video footage. You get a cool reference cheat sheet for some rules and things like that. But we discuss the color wheel. We go into all of it, man. Uh, but without further ado, let's take a look at this topic of the Krita RGBA brushes and how they might help you kind of shake things up in your workflow. Let's go. Yeah, let's get started here. So what you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of <laughs> kind of my big mug coming in and out. It probably looks really funny, me going very, very fast. Um, so this is actually the painting portion uh, broken up into two. Uh, whenever you buy the tutorial, it's broken up into two separate lessons. And what I have not included here is a third lesson, which is kind of the intro and the full explanation of how the RGBA brushes work, kind of what the intent is on using these. Uh, kind of the rules of the road, get yourself started, set up your canvas, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that stuff, I do highly recommend picking it up. I do have the links to the tutorial for a bunch of different storefronts. If you're into art station market or flipped normals or Gumroad or cube brush. Uh, yeah, there, there's going to be a link for you because I know some people have a loyalty to certain storefronts and I want to make sure that if if it's something you're interested in, I want it to be available where you are. Uh, so yeah, go go check that out. Like I said, four bucks. Every once in a while it goes on sale as well. Uh, but just keep a lookout for that one. I, I'm pretty proud of it. It's over two hours long and we do the real-time painting. But as you can kind of see, what we're using is the RGBA brushes. Now what are these? These are uh, red, green, blue, and alpha channel brushes. And I talk in much more depth about this in the tutorial, but just know that RGB is the way that light works. So Roy G. Biv, do you remember that from grade school um, or primary school? Um, other places in the world call it different. They, we call it grade school, uh, going from first grade up to fifth grade and, or sixth grade, and then you go up to middle school and then high school and all that good stuff. But 
we, we learned about the, the Roy G. Biv and the rainbow, the prisms of light. And since we're working with digital art, that is what we're working with is light or additive structure. Um, the difference really between additive and subtractive, additive light, the more pigment you add, the brighter and closer to white things get because layer uh, light kind of stacks on top of each other. However, with traditional paint, you have what's called subtractive. A as you add more pigments, it gets darker and more brown and more muddy because it's removing chroma. Uh, so yeah, that's a quick, quick rundown. We go into way more detail on that in the tutorial, but just know that these brushes work with a mix of a gradient. So going from kind of one color to jittering to another color in a gradient, very, very close on the color wheel and also alpha channel, which means opacity. So it has these beautiful kind of tails. Uh, I, I refer to it as a tail. Whenever you take your paintbrush on a canvas and you just load it up with a little bit of paint on a dry brush on a dry canvas and you like scrape it across, it has this tail. Um, almost like a comet, like if you see a comet in the sky or something and it has a little tail coming up behind it, uh, that's what traditional paint does really well and that allows for some great blending even without trying to blend, if that makes sense. So whenever I got a hold of these and someone in um, one of my videos commented, hey man, you should try these RGBA brushes and you know, I had not loaded up Krita really since that uh, which digital painting software is for you video that I've done. And that one, you know, I, I get comments about it all the time and it's helped so many people and I'm super happy about that because there are so many options. And what's interesting about Krita is since it's free, people kind of overlook it and say, yeah, cool, it's the free thing, but let me get the full featured program. What do I need to buy? What do I need to purchase? And for Krita to have these RGBA traditional style brushes, the impasto thick paint brushes for free is insane to me. Absolutely nuts. Um, <laughs> we've talked about it before, did a video about Corel Painter. Corel Painter would charge you 500 bucks for stuff like this. You get it for free. I, I can't believe it. It's so much fun to paint with these. And the fact that they give them away I, it's like there has to be a catch, but there's no catch. Like that's how good they are. I love using these. My favorite one, I think is the second one on the list. There's only six brushes, which is another thing we talk about. That limitation and only having six brushes to choose from is actually fantastic because you're not so caught up in your own head. You just pick one that you think sounds right or sounds good and then you use it and then you use the other ones and you're not picking between 200 brushes. You just got your, your main six that work super well together and you know, you're off to the races. But just having those at your fingertips, at your disposal to just play around with whenever you want. And yeah, it, it sounds kind of uh, hyperbolic and whatever, but it's a game changer. Having free brushes that react this well and Krita has all the other features, you know, your layer management and your, you know, color modes and your, your, your blending styles and your, you know, layer options. And there's so many things that you expect from a digital art or digital visual communication software. And Krita has them pretty well across the board. And just knowing that they're going in this direction of feeling like traditional painting and using that is so advantageous that I mean this is truly a disruptive thing in the industry <laughs> to be able to give something of this quality for free is I I, I, I can't believe it um, what, what you see here is we put down um, some underpainting and I, I really like working whenever I work with oils or acrylics on a canvas I like working in alla prima which means you do not layer your paint you just paint, you do it one and done. The first time you get out your paint brushes and your paints, that's the only session you have. Make something that looks as good as possible in one sitting and then you're done. 
and you have these nice wet on wet blending things that happen and if you get oils with some you know medium in there or like liquid or uh, alkalid or something like that you get just gorgeous gorgeous uh blends and edge control and things like that and these brushes man the impasto brushes there's impasto impasto detail thick paint the second brush thick paint is my is definitely my favorite brush in Krita, no doubt it's up there with one of my favorite digital brushes i've ever used because it has everything i need it has slight texture it has slight tooth to it that it catches on your canvas even if your canvas is smooth it still finds a way to kind of quote unquote find the angles it finds the pores it finds the holes it it feels just like traditional paint and using that and using your understanding of values and the color wheel and all these things just it's a treat to use and there's not a bad there's not a bad brush in that bunch i don't use the last brush it's called rock um, I, I know why it's there, but I don't really use it too much. Like, if I'm going to paint a rock, I'm going to paint a rock. I'm not going to use a stamp for it, necessarily. Um, sometimes I will. If it's a very fast turnaround or something, I'll go and photo bash and do all that stuff. But uh, normally I like painting things, because I like the look, I like the feel, and I like that sense of, like, achievement. Like, oh, I painted that, ah. You know? <laughs> and these brushes do that, man. Um, they're so much fun to use. Uh, but a few things to really make the most of these brushes. Like I said before, I only use one layer. That way all of the paint is blending together with all of the other paint. There's not stuff laying on top of other things. It's just, it's all there. It's all kind of mixing in together. And I also do not use the undo function. If I make a mistake, if I need to make a change, I paint it. And what that does is that allows for better brush work. It just, it shows your decision making. And if you look really close, like if you get this picture and like look really close at it, you can see where I've like sculpted with paint, you know? And because of these paint brushes have impasto, they have that thick kind of, you know, luscious feel to them. You can see each angle that the brush took and those edges can be used for texture or uh, kind of a silhouette or here uh, we do some really fun stuff with the clouds because clouds are great clouds are great to study because you have to know your edges you have to know your soft blending your lost edges hard edges you have to sculpt some stuff use palette knife style things to really get some good grit and texture in there with those wispy parts of the cloud and they're just so much fun because you can do so much with them. And that's why I thought painting this cowboy portrait, whenever I saw it, I was like, oh, I got to paint this because you have a beautiful, really dark, saturated, very color rich subject. And then that background is so light and not necessarily blown out because it's it's set up for exposure for the shadows. So you see all the detail in the shadows while the light kind of fades away. But I think that really makes for a nice ambience. It makes for a nice feel because it feels like you're outside with the subject. It feels like you're in that place because your eyes have adjusted to the shadows. You know what I mean? So whenever you talk about exposure, that's what you think about in regards to a painting is like, okay, is this daylight? Well, if it's daylight, do we want the interest in the light? Do we want the interest in the really bright clouds and you know, the, the really bright highlights on trees or what have you, or is the interest in the shadows. And that's one of the main decisions you have to make as an artist going in is, okay, where is my importance? Where are my focal points? What is my focus that I really need to, to render or put more information in? And for this, it was the, the shadows, which I love because you get to use those dark, rich colors. Um, remember, color lives in the shadow. And whenever you have an exposed piece, exposed for the shadows, you can just kind of do whatever you want and it's gonna look good, as long as your values are on point. And you'll notice here, I didn't start with a black and white and then use the color overlay mode and all that stuff like we talked about. Uh, I have a previous video about going from grayscale to color. 
didn't use that. I just went straight to color. I wanted to use my method of thinking about color temperature and then uh, lightness or value. So I would think, does this need to be warmer or cooler compared to what's next to it? And then is this lighter or darker compared to what's next to it? And if it's darker, I went more saturated in the colors. If it's lighter, I desaturated the colors while up the brightness. And that'll get you there. That, that will get you to a pretty good place no matter what your painting is. And it's a great way to build mood. And it's a very easy rule to remember. If you wanna get practice at using the whole like warm versus cool and then light versus dark, I do recommend using a limited palette with these brushes. So what I mean is I, I have a tutorial video about making a landscape using the, the Anders Zorn palette, which is um, titanium white, ivory black, cadmium red light, or um, it's also called scarlet red, depending on what brand of real paint you use, but just kind of a lighter, warmer red. And then you have yellow ochre, uh, which is gonna be your kind of more brown, yellow, um, deeper type of deal. So use those because you have your white and your black not only do they act as something to lighten and darken, but they act as your blues. I don't know if you knew this, but white and black are primarily made of blue. And sure, you can have warmer whites, but there's always going to be a little bit of blue in it. So it's a great way to cool something down while you have your yellow ochre and your cadmium red light that is going to warm it up. So that's a fun way to kind of get used to it. You know, you can introduce another color in there as well. It's just really learning the Zorn palette helped me tremendously. In the Zorn palette, I may even do a portrait, like a quick, like maybe cyberpunk thing, or I, I don't know, with these brushes, with a Zorn palette, because I think the way these brushes blend together is just second to none man like I could I would put these brushes up there with the best I have for Photoshop the best I've seen for like Paintstorm Studio or Affinity Photo Clip Studio Paint like these are up there um, Rebel um, now Rebel has more tweaks uh, Rebel and Art Rage I think are still kind of the the top tier premium you're gonna get almost one-to-one -one traditional painting feel but this is not far behind. Like this is easily number three, easily. Um, you have Art, you have Rebel probably first, Art Rage, and then you have um, Krita. I would say Krita past Paintstorm Studio for me now with these brushes. Like I just get excited thinking about stuff I can paint while using these tools. Which this is, you know, I think the version number I have is four point four point eight or something I need to I didn't check before this but it's in the later 4.4s which tells me we're very close to 4.5 and with 4.5 they're introducing oh my gosh they're we're gonna do a video on it trust me because they're bringing in full color smudging they're bringing in um, something called the my brush presets which you can customize your own organic bristle brushes and filbert br like oh my god this is a dream come true man <laughs> like I'm so excited about it and it's free. It is free. It's free. I can't believe it. I can't. I'm stunned that this is free. Because look at this. Like, it's so much fun to get in there and just figure it out. Just get in there, start messing around. You're not going to stain your clothes. You're not messing with, like, smelly turpentine. You're not. <laughs> but you're getting that feel, that feel of, let me get a rich paintbrush loaded up with paint and a medium on a canvas. And I just, I can't sing its praises enough. I love this thing, man. The RGBA brushes are a game changer. They really are. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you see some stuff that you like here. Uh, because, yeah, that tutorial's out, man. It is out. It's only four bucks for the price of a value meal or a fancy coffee from Starbucks. You can keep this two plus hour tutorial. It has me narrating in real time. We talk about every decision, every brush stroke we make, what our process is some uh, kind of cheat sheet type of things, but we just paint, man. There's no gimmicks here. There's no overlays of canvases. There's no uh, photo bashing, not, nothing like that. We're not even using the color picker, um, which I think is still A-OK, -okay, but just know that we're just eyeballing it. We're treating this as if we have a canvas next to us and we're looking at our subject. That's what we're doing. And these brushes are perfect for that type of studying. 
But yeah, go check out the full tutorial if you're interested. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you used these brushes? And if so, what do you what do you think of them? What do you what, what's your favorite part of it? For me, it's the blending. I love real time blending. I love getting those organic movements of the brush and just making it happen. But I'd love to know what you think about this. And big shout out to the team over at Krita. Uh, keep up the incredible work. We're all very excited for 4.5 coming out. Cannot wait for this thing. But uh, but yeah, keep making cool stuff. We will see you next time here on the channel. Keep up the great work and we'll see you soon. Take care.